With 38 races a year and 100 plus employees working on these race cars every day, the parts and pieces are really hard to keep up with. Thankfully, we've used Fastenal in the past to help us organize. We're looking forward to the next time to stop by to help us find even more efficiencies for our workforce. Hey there, I'm Brandon from Fastenal. Hey, Leroy. How awesome, nice to meet you, Leroy. You too. All right. All right, let's get started. All right, let's do it. Yeah, so my name is Brandon Smith, also known as Mr. Fastenal. Um, so I'm a lean consultant on the lean solutions team within Fastenal. So basically what I do is I uh, basically look at a customer supply chain and identify ways that we can bring value to that by making it more efficient, more streamlined, um, so that their production workers can focus on production and they can leverage a supplier like Fastenal to focus on their non-core competency like inventory management functions. All right, so once we identify a scope, in this instance, fasteners. So I want to understand what all those are current state today and then identify ways that maybe we could do it better or more efficient in the future. I'm Leroy Kaler, purchasing manager at RFK Racing. We're trying to figure out ways to uh, save us time, energy on having to restock supplies, parts, fasteners. It's an opportunity for us to help ourselves in a lot of areas, I believe. Uh, how long have you been with RFK? I've been here working on my 15th year. Wow, okay. Yeah, so um, typically when we start these types of site assessments, uh, we start with the meeting room, the quick introductions, so that we know who's at the table. Uh, and then after that, we jump right into talking about supply chain. So my goal is to understand process flow. So I want to know when there's a need and someone needs a part, how do they go about getting that part? Uh, and then basically everything just funnels out from that, right? So they take the part, are you out of stock? Now you need to replenish that stock. So what does that process look like? It just keeps rolling into the next thing. Do you, are you familiar with any quality requirements or a quality process like testing or anything that we would have to go through for those fasteners first? Well, for us in racing, obviously, we can't afford a failure on track. So having high quality items is crucial to our success. And uh, Fastenal is well known as a brand that provides fasteners of that nature. Is there an identifier that, is it just word of mouth to let people know that, hey, we're out of this? Uh, generally, yes. Okay. So okay. those are the types of things where I'm, I feel like we can do better. If okay. we have it set up where when they take it, you know, it triggers, then we know it's gone, we know it's taken care of, we know it'll be restocked. Okay. And, uh, and it's one less thing that those guys got to spend their time on. Right. In manufacturing, I've seen 30 steps, 40 steps, 50 steps in a process, uh, just a simple MRO supply chain process. Today, I think we're around maybe 20, 25 steps, um, which is obviously on the smaller end. My rule of thumb is, and I tell organizations this all the time, if uh, your simple MRO procurement process takes 20 steps till the bill is paid on the back end, if it's more than 20, it's usually an overburdened process. If you can get it under 20 steps, then you start looking at where's most of those steps being placed, right? Is it with the customer or is it with their supplier? In a strategic partnership, you would tend to like to see close to a 50-50 split. Uh, a lot of times current state, what I see is out of 20 steps, the customer will have 18 of those steps and the vendors will have maybe two. Today, like, you know, with this type of partnership with RFK, we're looking at strategic partnership. Where can RFK leverage Fastenal for more than just, hey, supply us apart uh, and make an investment in your business, you know? So here's our, uh, like an incoming package, our receiving process. Okay. Piece comes in. Okay. We'll take it into the storeroom here. All right. Okay. So this is the storeroom. Yep. So basically at this point, you're just going to confirm what's Con on the packing. Yep. Confirm so, okay. what's in it. Okay. Go through the process. And uh, that's really all there is to it. Okay. So here is a lot of the fasteners that we were talking about. Okay. Are the fasteners used in just one area or is it multiple departments? So it's multiple departments. Okay, from department to department today, I'll get an idea of what walk time is looking like. Okay. What type of data do you need from these, these parts? Like, do you need to know how much you have on hand or do you just need the replenishment process to be continuous like that tube bin system? Replenishment. Okay, so it's more so focused on replenishment. You don't care really what's in there number-wise. You just need to know that the replenishment is going to be there. Correct. The stocks yep, okay. exactly right. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, I want to get a quick time study because since this is the farthest spot from that storeroom area, uh, I think we can make a massive impact here. So I'm going to do a walk from here directly to the storeroom and then get an understanding of that, and then we'll see. We'll add some validity to what they said in terms of traveling 8 to 10 times a day, all right? All right, that all right. let's do it. 
So the thing that was most surprising to me today through our walkthrough was how far the upstairs assembly area has to, those folks where they have to walk to to get materials they need and the amount of times they do it in a day. So they're going down eight to 10 times a day. Um, and it, we did the time study. It takes about two minutes one way just to get to the place. Then you have to factor in the time to get the materials they need, find the materials they need. So it, easily it could take 10, 15 minutes just to go and get the parts you need. Our goal future state is to obviously shrink that time down. Now, if it's not 10 minutes, now maybe we can bring it down to five minutes or four minutes. Uh, and that's value just like that. All right. When I get involved with an organization and we're going through that consultative process, basically basically total cost of ownership uh, is what I'm looking at. So that transcends the piece price, right? Or just the freight cost. It's the compilation of all of those things. So processing costs, right? So one of the exercises that we just did was, was, was walk time, right? We multiply that by a fully burdened labor rate that's held internally. And that's where we, where we generate, hey, today, that process that you're doing costs you this amount of dollars. That's fine, maybe it has to be that way. All, we, all I do is build the business case to show with our solutions and our strategy, if we do it this way, which might be a bit different, if we do it this way, this is what the potential cost could be. Normally we'll see a 20 to 30% reduction in, in non-value added tasks, right? And it's, it's an impressive number that a lot of organizations they see and they're like, wow, how can you do that? But really when you break it down, it's all just basic math. It's, it's you cut 10 POs a day, all right? So that's 300 POs a month per se, let's say, right? And how much does it cost to generate a PO? Oh, is it $100 per PO? Now you're at $3,000. That's basically what we do. As long as we draw the baselines, we can go from current to future and quantify what our potential value creation or cost savings opportunities could be. All right, I appreciate the time today. Um, so yeah, I guess we should talk a little bit about next steps. Um, so I'm thinking that we could probably get a presentation together to show future state probably within a month. So I think me, uh, my team will get together, we'll shoot out some dates maybe next month to go over presenting and get everybody back at the table. That'll be great. And All I'll right. send you the spreadsheets I have on some of the parts history yep. and uh, get you that. Yep, any data you can bring is perfect and then we'll analyze all of that and, and get a date on the calendar. Sounds great. Awesome, thanks a lot, right. Thanks again, Brian. Yep.